we are going to see the part 4 of uh, lesson number 11 reflection of light so today we will revise the topics like reflection the reflection is the change in the direction of waves at surface between two different media so that the wave return into the medium from which it is originated so the uh, that may be light waves that wave may be sound waves or that wave may water waves if that wave when it is incident on any any surface if it is reflected back in the same medium that is called as a reflection of that wave for that reflection we need a plane surface and from that plane surface on which reflection is occurring the incident ray which is falling on that plane surface and the reflected ray which is reflecting back from the same uh, from the surface plane surface in the same medium are exactly equal to the normal as we have seen incident ray is making an angle with normal and it is called as the angle of incidence reflected ray is also making angle with normal and it is called as a angle of reflection we have seen the plane surface that is reflecting surface is a mirror and the surface which reflect the light and creates a clear image is called as a mirror so mirror is a reflecting surface now we have seen that the plane glass if we take that plane glass and back of that plane glass if we coat it with aluminum or silver and for giving protection if we coat them coat that coating with the lead oxide it will give you 100% reflection from that mirror how that image is formed out of thousands of rays light rays which are traveling in all direction from the source several rays fall on the mirror get reflected from that mirror and reach our eyes and the image is formed which is appearing to be coming from the behind of that mirror now we have seen that the how the point image is formed by taking this example figure number 11.2 that shows that the object o when it is kept in front of mirror m1 m2 incident rays that is or1 and or2 are falling on mirror and these are getting reflected from m1 m2 r1 s1 and r2 s2 if we extend r1 s1 and r2 s2 we get the position of o1 which is the position of image that is exactly behind the mirror now we have seen also a extended source of how ex image of extended source is obtained as we have seen that the point p and q image of that point p and q are formed the points between p and q they are also forming an image between point p1 and q1 so if we use an extended source instead of a point source an image is formed of every point of the surface a source forming an extended image of the whole source so the image which are formed by plane mirror is of same size as the source now we have seen the next point that is how many numbers of images obtained if we put two plane mirrors at different angle if we put at 90 degree to each other we have to place a small object in front of those two object those two plane mirrors and 
if if we see the images which are obtained in both the mirrors we have to calculate how many images we can see for that there is a formula that is n that is number of images is equal to 360 degree upon a that a is denoted as the angle between the mirrors minus 1 oh, so we can calculate the number of images for different angles like angle 120 degree for that angle we will put that value instead of a we will put 120 degree and we will get the answer and that number of images we we can obtain with the formula we can use next angle that is 90 degree and calculate that formula and find out the number of images from that so here are the calculations if we put angle 120 degree according to formula 360 degree upon a minus 1 that is 360 degree upon 120 minus 1 so answer of 360 degree 360 upon 120 is 3 minus 1 that is we can obtain two images when we put the two plane mi mirrors at an angle of 120 degree in that way if we put those two mi plane mirrors at an angle of 90 degree the images obtained in both the mirrors will be three images in that way you can calculate different images different uh, calculations for different angles we can get number of images as per the formula now there is no consistency in those images at 120 degree the two images are formed at 90 degree three images are formed at 60 degree there is there are five images are formed at 45 degree seven images are formed at 30 degree 11 images are formed if we decrease the angle the, there is a increase in number of images so you can see that now next point that is when the person is standing in front of a plane mirror how the image is formed and what will be the nature of images we have formulated the formula from the figure that is 11.4 the hf is taken as the height of the person if h is a head and f is a feet the r and s are the midpoint of he and ef respectively now if we take the mirror pq at the height of nq from the ground which is perpendicular to the ground there will be the minimum height of the mirror will be pq now in order to see the full image of the person the rp and qs must be perpendicular to the mirror if we put those perpendicular to the mirror then we can we will obtain that the pq is equal to rs now pq if pq is equal to rs and rs is equal to re plus es then re is equal to he upon 2 so e is a, a midpoint of he therefore it will be half of that distance so re is equal to he upon 2 and es is equal to ef upon 2 so if we calculate we will get he is pq is equal to hf upon 2 that hf we have seen in the previous slide that hf is the height of the person and to get minimum height of the uh, mirror the the minimum height of that mirror will be the half of the person's height so the statements goes like that in order to see the full image of the person standing in front of the mirror the minimum height of the mirror must be half of the per height of the person so in the next topic we have seen the mirrors are of two types plane mirror which is made from the plane glass which is coated by aluminum or silver and again it is protected by lead oxide then spherical mirror spherical mirrors are curved mirrors which are of two types first is concave mirror which is coated from outside 
and convex mirror which is coated from inside so the reflecting surface in concave mirror will be inside and the reflecting surface for convex mirror will be outside now when glass when glass is making with the plain glass when plain glass is coated there will be formation of plane mirrors when spherical glass is coated there will be formation of concave or convex mirrors and out of them the spherical glass can form the lenses also and those two types of lenses we are going to see in 10th standard <clears throat> now generally these spherical mirrors are of a uh, hollow glass sphere and the inner or outer surface of this part is coated with shiny substance to produce spherical mirror the reflection of uh, those either from inside or outside if it is from inner surface it will be called as a concave mirror if the inner surface of the spherical mirror is reflecting surface then it is called as a concave mirror and if it is if the outer surface of the spherical mirror is reflecting surface then it is called as a convex mirror now we have seen different terms related to spherical mirror first term we have seen that the center of sphere glass sphere is called as a center of curvature then next concept we have seen the radius of this uh, uh, sphere is called as radius of curvature glass sphere and then we have seen if we cut the part curved part and if we coated that part the center of that part center of mirror is called as a pole of the then we have seen that e the imaginary line passing through the center of curvature and the pole is called as a principal axis then we have seen that if incident ray falling on this mirror concave mirror they reflect and converge at a single point and that point is called as a focal point or the principal focus for concave mirror the principal focus is in front of that mirror and for convex mirror that is behind the mirror so we will go through the definitions center of sphere of which mirror is a part is called as a center of curvature of the mirror the radius of sphere of which mirror is a part is called as a radius of curvature of the mirror the straight line which is imaginary line which is passing through a pole and the center of curvature of the mirror is called as a principal axis now the principal focus the it is denoted by capital f and the point on the principal axis where incident ray meet after reflect from the mirror is called as a principal focus of the mirror then focal length it is the distance that is small f between pole and the principal focus is called as a focal length and the last concept that is pole it is the center of mirror surface is called as a pole of the mirror to study the images formed by spherical mirror we can draw a ray diagram for that uh, the ray diagram the concept of ray diagram is the depiction of the path taken by light rays is called as a ray diagram to draw a ray diagram we have to uh, learn first three rules which are based on laws of reflection and those rules first rule is if an incident ray which is parallel to the principal axis then the reflected ray passes through the principal focus second rule we have studied that if an incident ray passes through the principal focus of the mirror the reflected ray which is parallel to the principal axis third rule we have seen that if an incident ray passes through the center of curvature of the mirror the reflected ray traces the same path according to that we have to draw a ray diagram next concept that is divergence and convergence the matchstick model which is showing the first matchstick model 
in which the heads are coming together and second matchstick model where heads are spreading away from each other the first matchstick model is showing the convergence that is the heads which are coming at the point in this arrangement the heads of the matchstick are said to have converged now in divergence the concept is exactly opposite to the convergence the uncoated ends are coming together the coated ends or the heads are spreading away from each other and in this arrangement the heads are said to be diverge from a particular point now the convergence is done by a concave mirror and it is also called as concave mirror is also called as a focusing mirror because the parallel rays which are parallel to the principal axis which are get focus after reflection in this mirror the size of the image is totally dependent on the distance of the object from pole of the mirror the next mirror that is concave convex mirror is dispersing mirror where divergence occur the concept of divergence is studied with the help of con convex mirror because the parallel incident rays get dispersed after reflection in this mirror the size of the image which is produced by these mirrors is always smaller than the size of the object and it is not to dependent on the object distance now in convex mirror the image obtained is always smaller than the object the image is behind the mirror the image is always erect as the reflected rays do not actually meet cross one another the image is virtual image now the nature of the image does not depend on the distance of the object from the pole of the mirror these images are always virtual and smaller than the object which are situated behind the mirror now these convex mirrors are used in cars side mirrors of the cars two wheeler side mirrors of the two wheelers also at the blind spot big convex mirrors are fitted in shops now we have seen that the how you will find out whether that mirror is convex mirror or concave mirror with the help of plane mirror now in plane mirror the image obtained is virtual image as well as in convex mirror the image obtained is also a virtual image but in concave mirror it depends on the object distance whether that object is between pole and the focus at the focus between pole and focus and center of curvature at the center of curvature beyond the center of curvature or at infinity these are the six positions of object on which it is decided that whether that image will be real or in uh, real or virtual now the image obtained is of same size of the object and it is erect in plane mirror but in concave mirror again the image obtained will be larger or the smaller depending on the object distance now in convex mirror the image obtained will be always smaller than the size of the object and the erect now in plane mirror the image obtained is erect position in concave mirror the image obtained is erect or inverted image in convex mirror the image obtained is always erect position now to calculate whether that image is inverted whether that image is real whether that image is erect you have to calculate those with the help of two formula out of them one is mirror formula in that mirror formula there are 
three concepts. First is object distance, which is the distance of the object from the pole of the mirror. Then second is image distance, which is the distance of the image from the pole of the mirror. Then the next is focal length. The distance between the pole and the principal focus of that mirror. So mirror formula is the relationship between the object distance, image distance, and the focal length is called as a mirror formula. Now this formula is valid for all spherical mirror, all positions of the object and, and, and all circumstances. The formula goes like that. One upon V plus one upon U is equal to one upon F. Then to calculate magnification, there is another formula, magnification due to spherical mirror and it is again having two concepts. One is height of the image that is small h2 and the height of the object that is small h1. So the magnification due to spherical mirror is given by the ratio of height of the image small h2 to the height of the object that is small h1. So this ca calculation or this formula will tell us that how the image is large or the small as compared to the height of the object. Now formula that is magnification capital M is equal to height of the image upon height of the object is equal to small h2 upon small h1. For calculation, only height is not uh, important. Image, of, image distance and object distance is also important. For that, if object is above the principal axis, the object height is always taken to be positive. For virtual images, height is positive. Object height is positive. For real images, the object height is negative. Then as the object is kept left to the mirror, its distance u is always negative. For that, for that, there is another formula that is capital M is equal to minus V upon U. So there are three formulas out of them. One is mirror formula. That is one upon V plus one upon U is equal to one upon F. And the second formula that is H2 upon H1 capital M is equal to H2 upon H1. And the third formula is that capital M is equal to minus V upon so we will go through the exercise question. The explain the difference between plane mirror, concave mirror, convex mirror with respect to the type and the size of the images produced by the plane mirror, concave mirror, and convex mirror. So the, in a plane mirror, the image obtained is virtual image. In concave mirror, the image obtained is a real and virtual image. Both type of mirror, both type of uh, images are obtained in concave mirror as per the object distance. Convex mirror will give you the virtual image. Now, the image is same as the object size and uh, also it, it will be the erect image. In concave mirror, the image will be larger or the smaller depending upon the object distance, whether that object is at focus at center of curvature or, or at the infinity, whether it will be between pole and the focus, between focus and center of curvature or beyond the center of curvature. In convex mirror, there is no such differentiation. So, the image obtained will be always smaller than the object and erect at any position of the object. In plane mirror, the image always be erect. In concave mirror, again, the, depending upon the distance of the object from the pole of the mirror, the image will be erect or the inverted. In concave convex mirror, the image will be always erect. Now, 
second question describe the position of the source of the light with respect to concave mirror and torch light projector lamp and the flood light now student understand first question you have to put the source of light that is bulb at different positions first the concave mirror have different positions first that is pole focus and center of curvature and between pole and the focus between center of curvature and the focus beyond the center of curvature and at the infinity now the question is very simple you have to place the bulb at particular place in torch light in projector lamp and the flood light for that you have to find out what is requirement of torch light and what is requirement of projector lamp and what is requirement of flood light according to that you have to put that bulb at different position so we will see first that is torch light in torch light the requirement is parallel beam of light we should get maximum light and maximum area should be covered so for that we will put that bulb at focus the image that is light obtained will be at infinity so we can uh, focus that parallel beam of light and we will get the clear uh, area now in projector lamp our requirement is we have some document and we have to put that in projector and we have to put it in a magnified uh, magnified image large image for that we have to put that source of light at center of curvature and we will get the magnified image now the image obtained will be also on the same position that is center of curvature and the our requirement that is magnified image we will get that magnified image in flood light we require that we should get that alert of red alert of flood to the maximum part of the area so that the people sitting at the large distance should see that bulb or see that alert and uh, save their life so to get that requirement we have to put that bulb beyond beyond the center of curvature of the mirror so we will get the image at the focus and the center of curvature so the <clears throat> in that way you can put you can think of that now next why are concave mirrors used in solar devices in solar devices in solar devices concave mirrors are used so you can start that question with solar devices as well as concave mirrors for that concave mirrors are converging mirrors solar devices work on solar energy so solar energy means sun rays which are parallel to the principal axis and if they fall on the concave mirror when sun rays incident on concave mirror they will converge to a point in front of the concave mirror and converging that sun rays will result in the formation of heat in a large amount maximum heat will produce and the purpose of this solar devices will solve so therefore the concave mirrors are used in solar devices now next that is why are cars fitted on the outside of the cars convex the mirrors which are fitted outside the car are side mirrors which are of convex types so convex mirror when an object kept in front of the convex mirror we get image which is erect and diminished image so car driver will get 
full view of back of its vehicle and full view of road uh, vehicles coming on that road be from the behind of that vehicle so the convex mirror will give erect diminished image to see the complete view of from the back of the car so convex mirrors are used outside of the car now next question is very much similar why does obtaining image of the sun on the paper with the help of concave mirror burn the paper so the concave mirrors are converging mirror sun is at infinity so the object when object is at infinity we will get image at focus but at focus the size of the image is the point image so when we try to get an image of the sun on the paper we will get a point image and here the converging of sun rays will result in the concentration of heat and that concentration of heat will burn the paper so when we try to get an image of sun on the paper there will be formation of point image and that point image will uh, be burn the paper now if the spherical mirrors breaks what types of mirrors are the individual pieces now if spherical mirrors which is concave or con convex if a spherical mirror breaks the individual pieces are of the same type you have to tell them that the when concave mirror breaks there will be pieces of concave mirrors if convex mirror breaks there will be formation of uh, pieces of convex mirror now because there is no change in the reflecting surface and the radius of curvature that is the main point you have to tell students now the next is sign conventions the question in your book in exercise is what sign conventions are used for reflection from a spherical mirror so for sign conventions there are some points according to cartesian sign conventions the pole is taken as a origin as we have taken took 0 0 as the origin so middle of midpoint of the mirror is pole and that pole is taken as the origin all distance which are parallel to the principal axis means left and right measured from the pole all distance measured towards the right are positive considered to be positive and all distance towards the left are taken to be negative that is negative means in front of mirror now cartesian sign convention principal axis is taken as a x axis <coughs> all distances which are measured vertically upward above the principal axis taken to be positive and all distances which are measured vertically downward from the principal axis that is below the principal axis are taken to be negative now the object is always kept on the left of the mirror so the focal length of the concave mirror is negative focal length of convex mirror is positive because it is on the right of the mirror in that way you have to draw the picture draw the figure of the this sign convention you have to draw a concave mirror you have to tell that this is the pole which is showing the origin and we show the origin like 0 0 in maths towards the right positive towards the left it is negative upward positive downward negative so in this way you have to draw the cartesian sign conventions diagram now the next question draw a ray diagram for the case of the images obtained in concave mirror as described on the table number table on page number 122 for that material required is candle or the glass lamp two cardboard boxes 
लार्ज कार्डबोर्ड शीट व्हाइट पेपर कॉन्केव मिरर मीटर रूलर वुडन ब्लॉक इन द प्रोसीजर यू हैव टू टेल द ऑब्जेक्ट पोजिशन वेर इज द ऑब्जेक्ट देर आर सिक्स पोजिशन ऑफ द ऑब्जेक्ट इन इन्फ्रेंस यू कैन राइट वॉट इज द पोजिशन ऑफ द इमेज वॉट इज द साइज ऑफ द इमेज वॉट इज द नेचर ऑफ द इमेज इन दैट वे द टेबल विच इज गिवन इन युअर बुक इज प्रेजेंटेड इन रे डायग्राम we have seen we will start with the last we have seen that if the object is at infinity or at a very large distance <clears throat> the image obtained is at focus exactly if we see the second case if the object is at focus the image obtained is at infinity both the cases the nature of image is same that is real and inverted or inverted and real but the size of the image you have to keep in your mind that if when object is at focus the image we will get will be the large image as we have seen in the torch light so when object is at infinity we will see the point image as we have seen in the stars when we see the stars <coughs> we see that the stars we get that image like a point source point image now in the fifth position you can see that the when object is beyond the center of curvature the image obtained is between the focus and center of curvature or the center of curvature and the focus now same situation when object is between focus and center of curvature the image obtained is beyond the center of curvature exactly opposite again the nature of image will be same that is real and inverted but again here when object is between focus and center of curvature we will get the magnified image and when object is between beyond the center of curvature we get image that is diminished image these are the points which we have to keep in your mind now second last position that is when object is at center of curvature we get the image at the same place but the image is inverted and real image size or the the image size is same as the object so we have seen that the if we put that <clears throat> in projector we will get the image now the last that is if we put the object between pole and the focus we get the image behind the mirror nature of the image will be erect and virtual size of the image will be magnified image now we will see which type of mirrors are used in the following case the first is periscope plane mirror is used in floodlight concave mirror is used in shaving mirror con is used kaleidoscope again plane mirror is used street light we have to spread that light so convex mirror is used in headlamps of the car again we want focus of the light so the concave mirror is used and the source of light we said that in torch torch light that for source of the light should be focus uh, should be placed at the focus now there are some examples we have seen first example that is object at height 7 cm is kept at a distance 25 cm means first is the object height that is h1 and the distance is given that is u object distance is given and the concave mirror in front of concave mirror the focal length of mirror is 15 cm 
for concave mirror you have to keep in mind that for concave mirror focal length is a minus 15 next what will be the size and the nature of the image you have to calculate first we will put given object distance minus 7 h1 object distance 25 minus 25 centimeter focal length minus 15 centimeter you have to find out screen distance that is image distance you have to find out nature of image whether it is erect or virtual image then we have to calculate image size that is h2 for that two formulas we have seen use that is mirror formula and magnification due to spherical mirror so calculation to find out image distance first mirror formula is used for image distance mirror formula is 1 upon v plus 1 upon u is equal to 1 upon f after putting the values we get that 1 upon v is equal to 1 upon minus 15 plus 1 upon 25 so converting them 1 upon v is equal to minus 1 upon 37.5 so image distance will be minus 37.5 centimeter therefore from question you can write that answer like the screen should be placed at 37.5 in that case minus side is showing that the image obtained is in front of the mirror so that is show, showing minus sign. Now to find out the uh, size or the height, the magnification to spherical mirror that is capital M is equal to H2 upon H1 is equal to minus V upon U. Out of them, one formula we will use as H2 upon H1 is equal to minus V upon U. So putting the values, we will see that the h2 upon minus 7 is equal to 375 upon 250 15 upon 10 now converting them h2 is equal to minus 10.5 centimeter again minus sign here is showing that the image obtained is below the principal axis that is the image obtained is inverted image a second example that is the convex mirror here the convex mirror has the focal length of 18 centimeter the image of the object kept in front of the mirror is half the height of the object what is the distance of the object from the mirror in that case first you have to clear the part which is given first focal length which is plus sign because it is convex mirror so focal length is on the right side focus is situated on the right side of the mirror so distance is plus the image is half of the object height therefore h2 is equal to half of the h1 object distance we have to <coughs> calculate in the calculation the two formulas again we have to use first is mirror formula and then we have to use magnification due to spherical mirror first in calculation we will use magnification due to spherical mirror because here to calculate u we don't have uh, v so both the values are not here so to calculate v we have to use second formula magnification due to spherical mirror h2 upon h1 is equal to minus v upon u so putting the values of h2 half h1 upon h1 is equal to minus v upon u so converting them the value of v is uh, obtained that is minus u upon 2 so again using mirror formula putting the values of uh, v we have calculated that u is equal to minus 18 again that minus sign is showing that the object should be placed in front of the mirror
so the in front of the mirror means the object should be placed at the left of the mirror of convex mirror now the third example we have seen the 10 cm long stick is kept in front of the concave mirror having focal length of 10 cm in such a way that the end of the stick closest to the pole or pole is at the distance of 20 cm what will be the length of the image so here first you have to clear the given what is given in that question you have to find out length of the stick is given that is height that is h1 is given again the height is positive focal length 10 cm again minus sign is there distance of the stick minus 20 cm length of the image we have to calculate the height of the image so for that both the formulas are required so in formula you have to write the both the formula in calculation we will use mirror formula after using that mirror formula putting those values we get to the conclusion that the v is equal to minus 20 after using that uh, value of v we will calculate the height of the image that is we obtain the height of the image is minus 10 cm again that minus sign shows that the image obtained is below the principal axis now the question is simple three mirrors are created from the single glass sphere which of the following is common so first is pole center of curvature radius of curvature principal axis so here the pole the so radius of curvature and the principal axis all are different for three mirrors but only center of curvature is common for three mirrors thank you